I have a new obsession. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you guys are new here, my name is Lisa and I'm a romance booktuber as well as a young adult booktuber. I talk about these two genres the most on my booktube channel, but I tend to dive into new genres and test out new genres to see which genres of books that I would fall in love with next. So far in last year of 2020, I fell in love with thriller novels and I also fell in love with middle grade novels and I also fell in love with general fiction and as well as paranormal romance. So this year is not a surprise that I've tried out a new genre and I've already fallen in love with it and it's actually classics. So if you guys are also new to book two with the classics community definitely check it out. There's actually a hashtag called classics community and it's filled with all these booktubers from different ages from different backgrounds and it's just these really passionate readers talking about these classic novels that you might write off and you might think that they sound really boring but they talk so passionately about it. They talk so eloquently about like the plot devices the plot itself and character motivations and the characters and also the author backstories that they actually convinced me to try out a lot of these classic novels. And so far I've read a bunch that I fell in love with and that I really do enjoy. There's something about classics that make it more enjoyable simply because we know that it's kind of like the original piece of like literature that followed this plot device or it's at least like a well-known one or these classics have very multiple layers to it so that it keeps the plot interesting that make me want to read more of these classics. And I've watched a couple of booktubers in the classics community and they were just so well done. Like they talk so eloquently about it that I really couldn't say no. And I was convincing myself that I have to buy these books. So for this video, I'm actually showing you my deep down spiral of all the classic novels that I've actually obtained in the last week that I'm really excited for to read. Some of these books I actually read already. Um, I read them first through the library and through ebook copies. And then I finally decided to buy them because mostly because buying books is kind of like a gamble. You never know if you're going to like it or not. And I didn't want to spend money on something that I didn't like. So some of them I did read and some of them I'm just super excited to read. So let's get started. So I think the first stack of books that I'm going to talk about is actually these Penguin Classic Editions that I think a lot of people use on um, Bookstagram as part of like the dark academia like trend that was trendy back in like last year near Halloween and near um like October time, lots of people really follow that dark academia trend with, you know, the plaid, the red lipstick, the dark hair, and you know, the aesthetic and everything. So here I am trying to follow that aesthetic. But basically, these are some classics I picked up. Um, they were fairly cheap. They were around like under $10 each. So I'm super excited to go through them with you. The first classic novel that I bought is actually kind of like a novella. So that's why it really kind of gripped me. If you're a new classics reader and you want to try out new classics, I think the best way is to actually dabble into shorter stories, things that you can finish quickly and things that you can understand quickly as well. So this one is actually called Utopia by Thomas More and I was first attracted to this book simply because of the title. The title um, it means that there's like another world out there and it's a very perfect world and it, there's deeper meanings to it. And this one was fairly short so that was another reason why I had to add it to my cart. I I don't know too much about this book, but basically this book talks about religious tolerance, provision for age, and stale ownership of land, and it's just a lot of deeper understanding and analysis of a world that is not currently the world that we live in, and I think this one's going to be a very interesting one. I actually already read like the first introduction and also like the letters that are involved in this story so far, and I'm working my way through chapter one, and I'm quite enjoying it so far. I think the writing is easy to understand, and it kind of pulls you in right away. So that's kind of the classic novels that I really do enjoy. So the next book that I picked up is actually a book that I already read and I actually talked about in my first classics video that I uploaded here on my booktube channel. If you guys haven't watched it yet, it's Romance Reader Tries Classic Novels for the First Time. And I tried a bunch of shorter classic novels as well as children classic novels. And I really enjoyed that experience. And this one is called The Turn of the Screw and Other Ghost Stories by Henry James. So I read The Turn of the Screw and I actually really enjoyed the 
turn of the screw mostly because I was watching this classics booktuber and she's actually my favorite classics booktuber that I watch all the time um she uploads like twice a week and I always manage to catch it every time she uploads it mostly because I just love her reading vlogs and I love her videos where she talks about classic novels that we should pick up her name is Emmy Reads and you should definitely go check her out um I'll link her in the bio and description um so that you can check out her videos but basically she goes into really deep analysis of the turn of the screw she convinced me that I have to read it because it would change my life and it actually did it's like a gothic horror novel about this governess that goes to this mansion to teach these two children but she starts to realize that these two children are not like what she ex originally expected them to be they're not angels and that there may be something sinister happening in the walls of the house and things like that so it was really scary so I picked this up because I wanted to remember the fact that I actually read this classic novel and also because it has other ghost stories inside and I think I'm a really big gothic classic novel fanatic so that's where I'm going to go into it, and that's where I'm probably going to collect most of my books in that subgenre. So the next classic novel that I have is actually Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte and now this is actually a book that I haven't read in my high school days here in Canada. I think like a lot of my friends when I tell them that I'm reading classic novels and then I show them the classic novels that I purchased they're like you never read those in high school and I'm like no I read like other things. So this one is a classic novel that I want to get to mostly because my friends who aren't into classics actually really enjoyed this book and um, I heard really great things about this one. This one is about a person who kind of goes into a house seeking shelter during a winter storm and that's where he kind of learns like the couple that lives in that house and like their rocky relationship. I heard there was like a lot of imagery in here and a lot of like symbolism in here so I'm excited to really dive deep into this book with the help of also online resources and to really have a better understanding of the themes and the characterizations involved too as well and I think that's like another great tip of reading classics if you guys are nervous about missing details the thing about classics is that there's so many resources online that you will never miss a detail as long as you have Google. So if you don't understand something, you can Google it and you can figure out like why this scene is 30 pages long. So the last Penguin classic novel in this edition that I have is actually Frankenstein, the 1818 text by Mary Shelley. So then this one is another one that is really high up on my classics list, um, mostly because it's gothic, it's horror, it's everything that I ever want in a classic novel. It follows the classic tale of Frankenstein, which just like a monster made up of different pieces and it's just like him kind of like wandering about. I feel like that this one will be something that I'll really enjoy especially now that I'm still in the winter months here in Canada and it's like dark and creepy at night so something that I'm looking forward to especially because my friend who is like an English major and she is like a classics fanatic she told me that this one was her favorite classic novel ever so really excited to get into this one and I can't wait to tell you more about it. So now we're moving into our really pretty editions of our books that are hardcovers and also like fake leather bindings and things like that. So the next book that I have to show you is actually the complete collection of Jane Austen novels. And it's just this really, really pretty purple edition with like the flowers and the gold lettering and things like that. And then it looks like this. And then also it kind of has like this two page step back that it's pretty. This publisher actually publishes a lot of classic novels and it's just, so pretty and honestly I would collect them all but they're really expensive. This one itself was $32 so that was a little bit pricey for me. If you guys want to know the edition of it it's Canterbury Classics. So this one includes six novels and includes all the novels from Jane Austen, Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Mansfield Park, Emma, Northanger Abbey, and also Persuasion. And I haven't talked about it on my channel yet but basically I already read three of Jane Austen's novels and they were Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, and Persuasion. And I absolutely fell in love with Jane Austen so much that I knew I had to collect her books. But I knew that I didn't want to spend a lot of money on editions and I didn't want to buy individual books. So I decided to just spend money on one book and have it this be my only book that I have of Jane Austen's kind of thing. Unless I see like really pretty other editions that are cheap, then maybe I'll think about it. But for now, I'll just buy this one big collection. This one was $32 and I think it's pretty cheap compared to me buying six of her books for probably $10 each and for editions that I don't even like that much. So might as well spend money on a book that I really like. So the last couple of edition novels that I have is actually from Paper Mill Classics and these ones are like I thought that they were hardcover because they just look like they were hardcover on the website that I bought it from from my bookstore but they're actually not. They're actually like leather binding and like 
it's like soft cover but it's leather so it's not really impressive but the designs on the books are really pretty so I guess I'll just like let it go so the first book that I actually bought is actually a book that I've always been interested in mostly because of that one movie with Emma Stone and it's called Easy A and it's basically kind of like a retelling of the Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne and after watching that movie I was just kind of really interested in this character who basically had you know intercourse before wedlock and then became pregnant and then have like the whole society turn their backs on her and how you know difficult it was in the back in the olden ages when you're not supposed to do that and you have actually fallen pregnant so I want to read this book and it's fairly short and I think like this one I can definitely fly through I really like the minimalist like design of this book too as well and I think it looks really nice the white ones do look really cute so the next book that I actually got is actually Dracula by Bram Stoker Bram Stoker and now this one is something that I've always wanted to read too as well which is kind of interesting because back in grade seven I remember vividly when I was in English class my friend was actually reading Dracula and I made fun of her because I was like why are you reading a classic like they're so hard to like understand like I don't get it but here I am fast forward like 10 years and I'm trying to read Dracula the one book that she actually read and that she actually really enjoyed so if you guys are not familiar this is kind of like the original vampire story and what happened was that I watched this movie called Dracula Untold recently and it has Luke Evans which is like man I love Luke Evans and I watched it and I just loved the Dracula character that I just wanted to read like the original book to see like this character come to life in the book format so totally excited to read this gothic fiction as well and the next book that I have is actually the Phantom of the Opera so now a lot of people in the classics community and especially like the person that I watch a lot she really loves the Phantom of the Opera and lots of people love the story but I don't I never watched the play I never watched the opera like I don't know the story like I don't know what's happening like why is everybody in love with it I just know that there's this like mysterious ghost that's kind of like going out throughout like the opera house and causing tr trouble and causing causing havoc but I want to know like what is actually happening so that's why I picked up this book it was fairly short so I'm really excited to get through it and this book is actually by Gaston LaRue I think that's how you say his name but like you know I butcher names here all the time um I'm actually halfway through this book right now I already started reading it and I'm enjoying it so far it's really creepy it's taking different turns than I thought that it would take and I'm very interested in this relationship between the Phantom and also Christine so can't wait to finish this book and let you guys know my thoughts on it and the next book that I have right here is kind of like this metallic cover so hopefully you guys can see it but it's actually Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and now this is the book that kind of got me into buying all these classics to begin with and it kind of made me want to start reading a lot more classics what happened was that in the month of January I actually had a reading slump where I didn't know what I wanted to read next I didn't particularly wanted a very steamy romance I didn't particularly want to read about you know high school life and, and you know that kind of deal so I decided to pick up a classic which just so happened to be Jane Eyre and if you guys are not familiar with Jane Eyre Jane Eyre is basically 500 pages it's a very thick classic novel and I decided to pick this up and it actually cleared my reading slump because after this I binge read three Jane Austen novels now Jane Eyre is actually about a girl who lost her parents due to like a disease and then afterwards she was forced to live in the house of her uncle but then her uncle passes away and her aunt actually has to take care of her now her aunt hates her and she kind of grew up in a really bad household where lots of people treated her really poorly because she was different and she was not within the true family so she was kind of abused and this is kind of her like really tough upbringing story where she learns to be from being very weak in the beginning of the story to going into very strong at the end of the story and I know this isn't a review but this is basically the story of Jane Eyre and I absolutely loved it this one was definitely one of my favorites and that's why I had to collect the books I wasn't going to collect classic novels but then I decided that I want to keep them on my shelves so that it reminds me that I actually read them and that I actually really enjoyed them. So the last classic novel that I have to show you is actually The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett and now this one is something that I have wanted to read or I've seen a lot in, in my elementary school days when I was a kid and I would see it and it's like this broken 
trade paperback on the shelves in my classrooms and I'll just be like this looks kind of boring because the cover looks really old I want to read something new but now that I am grown I know that these classic children novels are really entertaining and really interesting so that's why I decided to pick this book up um, I believe that this is the author that actually wrote a different book, classic novel that I really liked I forgot what it's called I think it's like with the children like it's with a princess or something so um I'll put like the photo here because I completely forgot like what the title is but I really enjoyed that book so that's why I have complete faith that I really would like The Secret Garden. I think this is just about a kid who kind of discovers that there is more to the garden that she is playing in and that there's going to be a different whirlwind of characters so I'm excited to fly through this one as well fairly short and yeah this one cover is not really my favorite mostly because it's really bright blue but I really wanted to read the book so that's why I got it. But anyways that is it for my classics haul. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and hopefully you guys learned more about different classic novels and learn to you know maybe add some to your TBRs to spice it up a bit try new genres this year and everything let me know if you read classics let me know which classics are your favorite so that i can add them to my tbr and that i can read them very soon this year but until next time i'll see you guys again bye